Hello friends, welcome to my channel. This is partial 3D design of my future 6 degree of freedom robotic arm. Last time we've assembled the grip arm and today I'm going to assemble joint 6. Here it is and this is joint 5. Alright, here you can see one of the motors. This motor activates joint 5 and the motor of joint 6 is inside the enclosure. Here it is. And specifically I'm going to use brushless motors. Uh, these are Odrive D5065 brushless motors. This is the latest version of the design of the arm. I had a lot of them and a lot of wasted 3D printed parts. Here you can see a drive board. This is the controller which will control both of the motors. I use a drive 3.6 24 volts version. So let's get down to the assembly. All the joints of the robotic arm consist of the motor and planetary gearbox. In the joint 6, the sun gear of the planetary gearbox is mounted directly on the motor. And specifically I'm going to use split ring planetary gearbox. In this type of gearboxes, sun gear rotates planet gears as usual and the planet drive the output ring which usually have a little bit less teeth than the fixed ring. In my case the output ring has 6 less teeth than the fixed ring and so the total gear reduction is around 30, a little bit more than 30. This is do-it-yourself pressure sensors, which you might have already recognized from the previous videos. This time I put them in the silicon shell and I'm going to attach these sensors to this rotating part. The output of the joint, which will carry the load, will be connected to this rotating part and 
The sensors will act as flexible spaces between the load and the output of the gearbox. In such a way, hopefully, I will be able to detect the forces applied to the joint, maybe not the actual forces, but the fact that some forces applied to the joint. And besides, flexible spaces will add compliance to the joint. Now, as we finished with the assembly, we can connect to drive and move on to testing how everything works. First of all, we have to set some hardware parameters. Specifically, we have to enable brake resistance and set some motor and encoder parameters. Next, we can move on to calibration procedure. First, we have to make full sequence calibration. And after that, you should probably save the configuration of the drive, because some important hardware parameters of the motor and the encoder will be set. But don't forget to set the parameter pre-calibrated in the motor config to true. If you have the encoder with index signal, like in my case, you can do one-time calibration procedure of the encoder shown below and save configuration after that. After this procedure, you won't have to do the calibration of the encoder every time on boot up.
After calibration procedure we can test the controller but first we have to put a drive in the closed loop control mode. By default the drive is in the position control mode. In this mode a drive accepts commands in the units of turns but from the initial position which is considered to be zero. There is also a velocity control mode. In this mode controller accepts commands in the units of turns by second. And in this mode motor rotates continuously with the requested velocity. To stop the motor we should command it velocity of zero. And to make the motor spin in the opposite direction we should command it the velocity with opposite sign. Next very important step is to tune properly controller parameters, specifically velocity gain, velocity integrator gain and position gain. According to drive recommendations, first of all we have to set velocity integrator gain to zero and then we have to gradually increase velocity gain until the motor exhibits some vibration. So let's get started. Sometimes during this procedure you may get an error like this. In my case the solution was to increase the velocity limit. So after some number of iterations I reached the point after which the motor started vibrating quite strongly. So at the level of 0 0.36 everything works ok and after another increase in velocity gain vibrations appear. According to the tuning procedure, the velocity gain should be set at the level of 50% of the vibration level. Now we can move on to the position gain. Position gain should be increased gradually until we will see some overshoot.
Actually, I didn't see any overshoot. Instead, after increasing position gain from the level of 96.5 by another 30%, vibration started appearing again. So I've decided to leave position gain at that level. And again, according to the drive recommendations, velocity integrator gain should be set to be equal to 0.5 times bandwidth times velocity gain, where bandwidth is the uh, overall bandwidth of the system. And I've decided that 10 Hz is quite a reasonable number for that. So, after all these manipulations, controller parameters looks like this. Position gain is 96.5, velocity gain is 0.24, and velocity integrator gain is 1.2. Alright, that's it for today, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.